All right, so in today's video, we're gonna go over the types of Uber passengers you're gonna run into. So if you've never been an Uber driver and you're thinking about being one or just curious about the topic, these are some of the people you're gonna run into, the types of passengers that you're gonna find while driving Uber. Number one is possibly the most common type of passenger you're gonna get. The group drunks. It's usually like three people who are together and you're their designated driver. If they tip you cash, they're very generous. They're usually very fun. They want to listen to music very loudly. And of course, this is the group that if they don't tip you cash, you can almost forget about getting a tip through the app because they're so drunk, they're not going to tip you right away. Every once in a while, three or four days later, they remember that the Uber driver was all right, and then you get a very generous tip. While these passengers are loud and sometimes kind of crazy, and they may want to engage you, in fact, if you do not engage with the group drunks, they actually get a little irritated. They want to know what type of music you're listening to. It's just they're going to have some general questions about you. But overall, they're pretty cool. And I've never really had a serious problem other than maybe people passing out in the car or falling out of the car when they get out because they're so drunk they can't figure out how to get out. Also, make sure you lock the doors on them because they may want to exit the vehicle prematurely. Other than that, they're a pretty straightforward group of people you're going to get. And they can be very good tippers if they can figure out to remember to tip. Number two, disgruntled elderly people. Your vehicle's too short, your vehicle's too high. You came too early, you came too late. My doctor sucks, they canceled my appointment. The list of complaints from these disgruntled old people is endless. They usually are disgruntled about something. Something in their life is going terribly wrong and you're the Uber driver, so you have to listen to their sob story about how horrible their disgruntled elderly life is. They can't walk the way they used to. Life is just going horrible because they're old, and you're the Uber driver, so you have to listen to their rant. Now, these people will actually engage in pretty good conversations, even though they're disgruntled, so just make the best out of these people. Surprisingly, they can actually be pretty good tippers. Seven, eight, nine dollars, not unheard of from a disgruntled old person. Number three, the dealer's mule. Sometimes it's the dealer's girlfriend or sister or grandma. It's somebody who's being used by a dealer to make a delivery. These are usually the types of rides you really think about canceling and you really should cancel. As soon as they walk in the vehicle, you can smell the herbal essence on these people or you can hear the bottles clacking around in their purse. They're not very good about covering up what they're doing in fact, sometimes they're even having conversations about what they're doing and who's picking up what and who's doing what in front of you, a complete stranger who might be a snitch. You may not know it, but when you accepted that $8 ride, you just became part of a trafficking network from one nasty bad neighborhood of the city to the other, and your passenger is carrying the product. These are some of the worst hygiene having type of people as well. It doesn't seem like their criminal enterprise is getting them very far. I think they probably don't even have a car, but they have the intentions of starting some small business. And you are now part of their criminal enterprise somehow. Not that we should generalize, but it's almost always a black female, somewhat overweight with clearly bad hygiene. You'll be able to identify these people by three simple reasons. One, they stink. Two, they're clearly involved in illegal activities. And three, they're completely oblivious to the fact that you may actually want to snitch them out because you're not wanting to be part of their failing, very low income producing criminal activity. And despite the fact they should probably behave and keep a low profile because after all they're trying to do something illegal, these are actually some of the most problematic people you're going to have. They struggle to follow rules. How the crap could you be so stupid? You're doing something illegal, at least play a low-key card. Nope, they can't even manage doing that. Most of the time, these people don't even look like they could keep a job at Burger King and Taco Bell. In fact, they look like they just got fired from Burger King or Taco Bell, and now they're working for an overweight drug dealer who also happens to have bad hygiene and horrible coordination skills as they can never figure out where they're going to, who the person buying is, how much the original price was. These people are really struggling at their enterprise. And well, after all, they're using an Uber to make the delivery. So how much does that say about their ability to even get a dang vehicle for their operation? Number four is the day commuters. Now, these are also a horrible little bunch for one they know they can't afford to tip you, so they don't 
even want to say hello. They sit there looking blankly out the window. If you try to make a comment about the traffic or the road or the fact somebody almost died in front of you in traffic, they're going to pretend it didn't happen because they don't want to make eye contact with you because they know they're not going to tip. These people are usually very punctual. They're very quick to get in your car, very quick to get out. They never, ever tip. They don't want to listen to music. They don't want to do anything other than sit there and stare blankly out the window because they apparently are aware of the fact they're not going to tip you. So why would they try to make eye contact with you when they know the fact that even you are aware at this point they're not going to tip you because after all they're wearing a freaking work uniform. These are absolutely some of the worst passengers you can get simply for the fact that you know they're never going to tip you, not even by mistake. But the good thing about these types of people is they're usually never problematic. I mean, literally, these people are not problematic, but they're also not fun. So if you're doing it for the money, they're great. If you're doing it for the safety, they're also great. But if you're doing it for freaking uh, entertainment purposes, uh, good conversation, there is none. Number five. The ones that can't follow simple rules. These are the ones that want to change your route. They want to vape in your car. They want to do something that they know they can't do. These are people that struggle to follow simple rules. These are the types of people you like, hey, man, this is a five-minute ride. We're going literally three minutes down the road. If you could please just follow the rules and behave for five minutes, unless you're stuck taking one of these can't follow the rule type people, on a 45 minute ride. These are the ones that are gonna go into things like their personal health, their relationships, all their personal problems, the fact they're getting uh, running away from an abusive relationship. They're considering ending their own situation somehow by a very, uh, yeah, they, they, you get into those people. And uh, these are just the ones that can't follow the rules. Now the rules are uh, pretty simple. If you read the, the rules of Uber, don't talk about religion, don't talk about politics, don't talk about whacking yourself. Don't talk about anything immoral or inappropriate of that nature. These are the types of people that they just cannot follow any of the rules. They want to do every single thing they're not supposed to do. They want to make you wait, and they don't want you to be on the clock. They want to make stops, and they don't want the stop to be on the clock. They pretend like they don't know how to use the app. These are individuals that for some reason or another simply cannot follow any type of rule whatsoever. These people suck, and they never tip. And they add icing to the cake, they swear they're going to tip you through. Oh, man, I got you on the app, dog. Wouldn't you worry about that, dog? Don't believe them. They're not going to tip you. They're going to break as many rules as they can. They're not going to tip, and they're going to leave weed, papers, and garbage in the back seat. These people, when they get out of your car, you just want to make sure you go in the back seat and look around and make sure they didn't leave a freaking syringe in the back seat or something. These people cannot follow rules Worst type of passenger you're ever going to have, guaranteed. These are the types of people that live in neighborhoods where there's a surge that nobody goes to. In every city, there's a surge area, an area that's always like 3 or $4 extra if you go pick somebody up there, yet no driver runs into that surge because they know that this neighborhood is full of ignorant, belignorant fools who can't follow the freaking rules. So even though there's a surge, we don't go there. In the case of Sarasota, where I live, these are places like Bradenton, Palmetto, areas you're just not going to pick up a passenger in because every single time, it's individuals who, for some reason or another, can't follow simple rules. It's almost like they have a list of all the things you're not supposed to do as an Uber passenger, and they're just checking one off after the other. Ridiculous. Number six, the neighborhood heroes. These are people that are being picked up in some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in your city. And there's a crowd of people who don't want the person to leave. They're like, oh, come on, dog, Hang out with us for five more minutes, dog. Hey, we're going to miss you, daddy. Hey, baby, mama. Hey, baby, we love you, baby. And these are the types of people when they get in your car, there's like 10 people running behind your car waving at the person because they're a complete hood celebrity and nobody wants them to leave the hood. It's like the whole neighborhood has to say goodbye to these people because they're so beloved and cared for in their community that nobody wants these people to leave. These are probably the most fun people you're ever going to have, and they're just neighborhood celebrities. Everybody freaking loves them. Nobody wants them to leave, but they have to go do something important, and they have to leave their neighborhood behind. But the neighborhood is really going to miss this person, and uh, you'll get these hood celebrity people every once in a while. Sometimes there's even somebody that comes up to your window to talk to you in person to let you know, hey, doll, 
a better nothing happened to Lakeisha while she in the back seat. You heard me? If something happened to Lakeisha, the whole hood going to come up after you, son. We know what car you driving. We got your license plate number, cuz. You ain't not going to do nothing to Lakeisha, man. And I'm like, look, man, I've picked up Lakeisha three or four times already. I can guarantee you ways. Nothing going to happen to her. But, yes, these are the types of neighborhood celebrities that three to four people have to come and say goodbye to before they leave their hood. Number seven, Little Kyle. Now, Little Kyle is a little white boy who wants to be black so bad, he takes an Uber ride from his mansion to the hood. And believe it or not, these types of characters exist all over the Tampa metropolitan area. You're going to pick them up outside of Daddy's mansion, and you're going to drop them off in a sketchy neighborhood where surprisingly they know people somehow. You may have thought the wig of phase had passed a long time ago, but it is alive and well in America. And if you're an Uber driver, every once in a while you're going to get these guys. These are kids who clearly have no business in the neighborhoods they're hanging out in, but for some reason they have to prove their bad manlyhood and they have to just hang out in the hood and surprisingly you're picking these people up in some pretty freaking sketchy areas despite the fact they don't look tough at all many times they're even going to try to intimidate you talking about their connects in the hood or how they just got out of a rehab program or how they're pimping one of their crackhead aunts or grandmas or something like that like they're always trying to do something to perpetrate their gangstiness but if you look at them they really don't look that intimidating as an Uber driver, you will run into these people, and they are very unfortunate individuals. They never have money for tip. Their soft white skins are covered in tattoos that contrast with the light-colored skin tone. Their green eyes, they try to show you how they're bleeding through pain, but all you can say is, gosh, man, I wish my eyes were that green. They try to look tough. They try to intimidate you, but they just look so soft and adorable. You know their mom loves them. Come on, Kyle. Come on. You know, despite the fact they try to put on this tough persona facade, behind it all, you can still see that little boy who was crying because his mom didn't want to take him to shuck his Jesus. You'll recognize these passengers by their face tattoos on pale white faces, beanie hats, and somehow wearing a sweater even though it's 110 degrees outside. Number eight, the sweet old black lady. These are some of my favorite passengers. They're going to show you pictures of their grandkids and their kids, tell you how proud they are of the family they've raised. They're usually working difficult, long hours to help their family get through some hard times. These are definitely some of the most compelling passengers you're going to meet. They're friendly, they're kind, they ask you about your day, they tell you honey and sweet, and you, they, they're just freaking always positive and upbeat, and you almost feel like when you get out, they're going to invite you in their house and make you some cookies or something. These are definitely some of the best passengers you're ever going to have. They don't tip, but you know what? They're so positive and kind that they don't need to tip. They're just great people, and they usually live in some pretty scary-looking neighborhoods, but of course... Just like the hood celebrity, everybody loves them. Sweet old black ladies are definitely awesome. They're usually working very hard for their families. And of course, they're always going to show you pictures of their loved ones and tell you how proud they are of somebody graduating. Now, these passengers are never trouble. One of the best type of passengers you're ever going to get. Number nine, the rehab centers. Now, these people clearly have a lot of problems in their life, but they can be good passengers because... If you play the right music and give them some positive message, they're going to tip you more generously than you could imagine. Don't judge by the fact that sometimes these people are homeless or going from rehab center to rehab center. Or even if you're dropping them off at a bus stop heading out of state, whatever problem they're going through in their life, it's visible. But don't ever underestimate the tipping power of somebody who has nothing to lose. After all, they're already on the streets, so money to them means nothing. Some of these rehab center people are actually some of the best passengers you're going to have. Play the right music, start the right conversation, and these people will open up to you and be generous as possible. Unfortunately, the downside of these passengers is you're not just going to have to focus on the road. You're going to have to focus on whatever their world is at that moment, whether they're on the phone blowing up a doctor's line talking about, I need more pills or trying to talk to you about their addictions or asking you if you have addictions or whatever conversation they're going to have is deep, meaningful, touching, private, whatever they're going through in their life. These passengers are definitely going to take a little extra engagement on your part. Playing the right music, talking about music, arts, whatever they're into, 
it's definitely going to take more than just playing some 90s rock for these people. But again, don't ever underestimate the tipping value of these people. So far, the biggest tip I have ever got while Uber driving has actually been somebody coming out of a rehab center. So just because their life spiraling out of control doesn't mean that they don't believe in generosity. In fact, many of them believe that if they do something nice for somebody, perhaps it'll help them find good uh, whatever they call it these days. When I first started Uber driving, these passengers were very intimidating i'm not gonna lie i mean here's somebody who's getting picked up at a rehab center and now they're likely going to be homeless you think they would be on their last like bit of like patience or you'd think they would be really irritated sometimes they're crying you would feel intimidated and not want to you, know, you might just want to put yourself in a shell but it's okay to open up to these people and again you'll be surprised how well they tip so never underestimate somebody who's going through a bad time I mean, just pulling up to a rehab center or a Greyhound station or something like that is already intimidating itself. Or just picking up somebody who's clearly homeless, you're just wondering, wow, where is this going to go? It's definitely intimidating for a new Uber driver, but once you've done a few of these, yeah, you know, just make sure you sanitize your vehicle for bed bugs when you're done and whatnot. But, uh, you know, you do a few of these and you just kind of understand what they need, what they want. And uh, just engage them. Don't be afraid to engage. And don't think they're as scary as they look. In fact, they can actually be very rewarding passengers. Number 10, the dancers. These are females who are going to let you know they're dancing, know what club they dance at. They're going to show you their Instagram and tell you to follow them. And they're, uh, they're not very shy about their uh, immoral lifestyles, you could say. These females are very problematic. They have a lot of problems, self-esteem, self-confidence. You'd think because they look attractive, they would have some self-confidence, but they don't. They've worn that away by their lifestyle. Now, at first, when I started getting these passengers, I was very um, not acknowledging them when they talked about that stuff. And then I came to the realization that these women are starving for attention. They want you to tell them you, they look beautiful and they look attractive and, and maybe a guy will find you one day and, and marry you or something. That's what they want to hear. And at first, when I first started getting these girls that they hop in, they're telling you their dancers and this and that, and you were just like, uh-huh, okay, I got a wife, that really ticks them off because at the end of the day, these women are starving for attention. They always want a man's attention, and if you're sitting on a 30 or 40-minute ride with them and you're not acknowledging the fact that they're a hooker, they get very upset and disgruntled, and then they start going through an emotional phase where they think they want to hurt themselves and it's your fault because you don't think they're attractive. These hookers are absolutely unreal. They're always problematic. Then they think they're talented. They think they're singers. They think they're dancers. They think they're entertainers. They think that one day they're going to be famous in Vegas. And you're like, lady, you look like you could barely work at a McDonald's drive through without messing up my order. If you're a male driver, these types of hooker type passengers are going to be a complete nightmare for you because they are so attention starved. You got a wife at home. You're just there to make some money. You're not interested in a hooker. And if you did find interest in a woman, it definitely wouldn't be a used one. You'd want to go get a new one. Definitely, these are high mileage vehicles that you're not interested in. But they are so, like, they struggle so much with their own personalities and their own personal struggles. They're going through relationships or boyfriends, a pimp who's abusing them. And they're just going through a lot in their lives. These females are super dangerous as well. Many times they're going to have a boy picking them up or dropping them off. So they'll start crap with you. And then they'll have a passenger, you know, when you drop them off, somebody else who will try to engage you. Like, hey, you was disrespecting my girl, man. You said she wasn't hot, dog. Yeah. Yeah, these are, uh, many times this will be the Kyle boyfriend but anyways hookers dancers whatever you want to call them these are some of the most disgruntled passengers you're ever going to have they are always problematic these are the types of people you have to be like okay do you want to make it to your destination because i'm about to end your freaking ride you are just a little bit too much to handle the best thing to restrain a female dog is to put her on a leash and these people really need boundaries so when they start talking about their hookering experiences you just need to put up some boundaries right off the bat hey I'm an Uber driver. I got a wife. Look, we're just going from point A to point B. I don't want to hear about what you do with, you know, three people inside the back of a van or whatever the crap you're doing. I don't need to know about it. Don't want you got you got to put boundaries on these people because if you play into their emotional 
blackmail of whatever they got going on in their lives and their attention seeking disorder, whatever they got going on, don't let them suck you into that. You really got to put some boundaries. Like, hey, this ride will end. You're going to go walking. And somehow I've always made it to my destination with these people, but just know that these uh, hookers, dancers, whatever the crap they are, are a world of trouble. These females have devalued their own property value below. They're basically in foreclosure at this point. It's like going to a foreclosure that's an open house at the same time. It's just a complete mess. And uh, yeah, horrible. I'm telling you, watch out for the hookers. These are the ones that it really serves best to play as much music as possible or to ask them what they want to listen to and blast it as loud as possible to make sure they don't even get a chance to open their mouth. Because when they open their mouth, they're seeking attention. Horrible passengers. And don't forget, if anything goes wrong, their eight-foot boyfriend pimp slash cousin is going to be at the destination waiting to fight you because you upset uh, his little dazzle star or whatever the crap she calls herself. Florida's governor just recently made a law making these types of things only happen to women 21 or older because he said women 18 years old are just too vulnerable to be in that environment. And he's absolutely right. I'm glad that the Florida governor made the number 21 instead of 18 because I will tell you, these females that are in these occupations are definitely, I mean definitely, psychologically scarred. I have not found a single one of them that's like, hey... I'm a dancer, but I'm going to behave and follow the rules and not tell you about how I'm thinking about ending it all very soon. Yeah, there are always problems. Many times they will tip you, but I feel like they tip you out of spite. Like, oh, you thought I didn't have any money. I'll throw money at you. People throw money at me anyways type of thing. Like, they'll tip you generously, but like in a disrespectful way. They'll be like, you thought I wasn't going to tip you. Well, people throw money at me, honey. And it's like they also have a very rude tipping behavior where like they'll tip you, but they'll let you know they're tipping you because money's not a pro. Like I can get money with this money maker. Man, these people got problems. Number 11, the scammy innocent girl. These are the types of females who think because they're pretty and, and gorgeous that they can just, oh, they're so innocent, right? So they're trying to scam you. They're trying to get you to take them further than you're supposed to. They're trying to change the destinations. They're trying to do something scammy. Now, on my channel, I've talked about some of the scams you're going to encounter as an Uber driver. And usually, most of these scams are being portrayed by females who think that with their smiles and, and oh, they're so cute. And so, how could a precious white woman hurt somebody, right? Those are actually the most dangerous passengers. They're always scamming. They're always trying something. And they think... Because they look pretty and gorgeous and nice and white and young that they can get away with all types of scammy behavior. In other words, they like try to blush their eyes at you and they try to flirt with you a little and they try to like use their looks in order to scam you. And these are pretty common if you're a guy. If you're a female, they may not try this on you. But if you're a guy, you're always dealing with females that are trying to scam you. So far, every single scammy type passenger I have had has been a young female and they try to use their looks as a cover for whatever sinister thing they're doing. Very sad. Number 12 is the happy older couple. These are good tippers right here. These are people in their 50s or 60s who are at a resort or they're going out to dinner. They're nicely dressed. These people are good tippers. They're usually going to want to have a conversation. If you get the right conversation, you're decent, you're polite, you're elegant. You can expect these people to pay you really good tips. They are never trouble. Sometimes their questions can be a little intrusive, but that just makes for good conversation. The older happy couples, these are good passengers. Number 13, bad hygiene. These are people who smell so bad you feel like you're just going to faint and pass out. The moment they walk into your vehicle, you feel like you're just going to die. And these people are somewhat like oblivious to the fact that they absolutely stink. You have to roll all your windows down. Then they ask you, why are you the windows down? Because you smell like a freaking dead rat, man. Like, what do you mean why are the windows down? These people smell so bad that even after they leave your vehicle, the vehicle continues to smell like them. These people have really nasty hygiene. It could be somebody who just got out of work and they just sweat too much and they're too nasty sweat. I don't even know how to describe it. But uh, these are some pretty nasty people. I'm telling you, there are some bad hygiene having people. And unfortunately, 
Sometimes you do just have to end the ride for bad passenger behavior because it's not acceptable for somebody to come in your vehicle and smell that bad. Now, I have worked with homeless people. Homeless people smell bad. They don't, they're not able to shower, okay? I go into homeless camps and do my homeless camp videos. I've been around homeless people. I know what somebody smelling bad is. Some of these people smell worse than homeless people, which is like, how can you let yourself smell that bad? Sometimes it's cigarette smoke. Sometimes it's just butt. Sometimes it's a combination of weed, butt, and cigarette smoke. And just horrible smelling people. These passengers, you do need to cancel a ride on them. Seriously, these people, it's disrespectful. It really is. And even after they get out of your vehicle, like I've had passengers where I put the windows down, I wash the car, clean the car, and the next day when I turn on my air conditioner, I can still smell these people in my car after they're gone. Super disrespectful. Obviously, they never tip either. You know, you try to be considerate to them, but there's no being considerate. If you're picking up an Uber and you stink, you know, you just need to cancel the ride on these people. Seriously. It's going to be a problem for you for the rest of the day, if not the week. It's like they leave your car, but the stink is still there. Number 14, disability fear monsters. These are people who have a disability, but they're using their disability as somewhat of a crutch for themselves. They act like you're not going to be aware of their disability, like you're not going to consider them, like you're going to do something you're not supposed to, and they're going to report you if you're, you know, these people have a disability and whatever going on. But then they're using that to intimidate people to get stuff out of people. Like they're trying to use their disability as a tool to scare or extort you into thinking that they're going to report you. And, you know, if they report you, then for not for a disability act type of thing, and it's a huge problem. You're like, okay, buddy, I can see you have a disability. I'm going to take care of you properly. There's nothing for you to worry about. I'm not going to discriminate you because you're missing a leg or an arm or a ear or something. And just, I'm, I, can, I can visually appreciate there's a problem here. I'm going to help you. I'm going to take care of you. And these people are, are sometimes very problematic because, like, they're using their disability as a crutch for themselves. Like, they're imposing it upon you and uh, they're trying to scare you because of the disability. And then you got the ones that tell you, oh, it's not contagious, which is like, uh, there's people that have things that are contagious that are in the back seat and they're not telling me. Like, so scary. These people really, they make their disability an awkward experience for you when it doesn't need to be. I can see you're missing a leg. I understand it. We're going to help you. We're going to carry you, and it's going to be great. Uh, you ha I have a lot of passengers who have a disability, and you notice it, and you help them, and you're kind, courteous. You go above and beyond, and many times those people also tip very well if you're considerate to them. But then you got the ones that are using their disability to try to scare you, the driver, and that's a real thing out here. Number 15, going to the hood. These are people that you picked up in a normal-looking type of place, but then the moment they get in the car, you realize they're going somewhere that really sucks. And they're like, hey, dog, hey, man, look, hey, you're going to have to roll your windows down, could, could, you don't want them people, hey, you can't go on this block, man, you can't, you, I can't be seen on the, you know, they're like, they, there's certain streets they don't want to be on and you have to drive and you may, don't get on 22nd Street, dog, I got beef over there type of people. And you're just like, okay, buddies, why am I risking my life for $7, you know? But uh, you got the people that are going to the hood and, um, you know. The thing about Uber driving is you're going to discover places that you had no idea existed. Like, there are so many bad places in your town. Maybe you drive, like, a half a mile away from these places, but you've never taken that dirt road behind the Publix to see what's back there. And there's a whole different road back there. And uh, these are the going-to-the-hood passengers. And there's usually, like, a point where they're like, all right, I'm going to tell you straight up, man. We go into Cantrell's house. Okay, now, you can't just roll up on Cantrell, man. I got to call him, let him know we're coming. Let him know the people on the corner know we coming and all that. Let me use your phone, dog. Let him know we coming, dog. And you're just like, ah, oh, crap. Can I, can I just end this ride right now? And the thing is, you might be picking these people up at a very promising place. Like, ooh, I'll pick up at the Ritz Carlton. This is going to be great. And then you get there, like, oh, crap, it's a worker. And then the worker's like, hey, man, hey, we, we finna go over there, though. You feel me? Like, don't be scared, now. Don't, oh, don't, get, don't be scared. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not more scared as I am disappointed. And they, they start making excuses about why they live in this neighborhood. Like, hey, this is temporary, dog. This ain't even like, I'm just here, like, I got another place in another state. I'm just staying here temporarily. Like, they always got some type of interesting story about how they ended up there. It's like, they're the ones, the funny thing is, like, you're, in the back of your mind, you may not even be paying attention to where you're going, but they're the ones in the back seat, like, hey, dog, hey, man, this, uh, this, this color ain't really the right, this car ain't the right color. I'm going to tell you right now, you're like, what do you mean this car is not the right color? Like, what? Like, they're the ones that initiate, like, the hype and suspense 
before you get to their neighborhood. You know, they're the ones that like hype it up and you're just like, oh, okay, I remember not to ever take a ride to this area ever again. Number 16, the I be right out. These are the people that you arrive to their destination and somehow they're not ready. Sometimes the destination, uh, I'll give you a recent one, the MLK Corner Store in Sarasota. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to wait for eight minutes outside the MLK store in Sarasota. I almost feel like these are people who take a bet, like, I bet the Uber driver will leave in three minutes. And like, they're like, man, I bet he'll be here for like 20 seconds. And then they make a bet on to see which one is right. And they call in Uber drivers just to see how long you're willing to wait in a sketchy area before you get scared and leave. Just word from the wise, if you're in a sketchy area and your passenger is not ready to go, chances are they're on the phone orchestrating something or they're waiting for something very ha very scary that could happen and they want you to bail them out if it does happen. And sometimes you're not really like, they're not really going to take the ride. They're calling you just in case they have to leave a very scary scenario. Those are the types of ride you just need to cancel. If you ever see, get a I'll be right out and it's a bad area, man, chances are you might want to cancel that. And I know that's going to put like some people that are innocent having to wait for another Uber, but at the end of the day, if you show up and they're not ready and the environment's not the safest looking environment, don't wait around. That's, you know, be ready. Okay, don't be like, a lot of times those people are doing something super sketchy and they're not really going to take the Uber ride. You're just like, if something goes wrong, I'll get into this Uber because they're doing something sketchy and they're calling the Uber in case they feel that they have to leave that spot really quickly. So be careful for that one. Now, if it's a place where people are drinking like a bar, a nightclub, a hotel, you can wait a few minutes for somebody. But if it's a high traffic foot area where there's a lot of sketchy things going on, don't wait for anybody in those places. It's not worth it. Number 17, the redneck. Now, these guys don't usually take Ubers, but when they take Ubers, it's because their truck is in the shop. You're going to talk to these guys about your truck, your extended warranty, place some, uh, some uh, I don't know, some Tim McGraw or something, and they're happy. Very good tippers. Number 18, the fake it till you make it passenger. These are passengers who are being picked up at a very exclusive address, but there's nothing exclusive about these people. In fact, you can tell they're probably there to wipe the toilets, but they want to pretend like they're there to do something important. These are the types of people that are going to tell you they spent $5,000 on their hotel and they were roommates with somebody who was uh, famous and they're going to meet beyond, say, after. They're, you know, they, they always have some story about how expensive and lavish their lifestyle is and how they know Beyonce and how Beyonce was at the party. These types of people are just... Uh, probably realistically staying at the Marriott and uh, they're playing make-believe on the weekend. In reality, these people can't even afford the cost of living today. They don't even have a freaking Uber or a Lyft. They're broke, but they want to pretend like they, uh, like they can live that lifestyle. At least for the weekend, they can pretend to be rich. So at the end of the day, fake it till you make it. These people do exist and they want to go stunting on their Uber driver. Number 19, finally, the I will certainly harm you passenger. These are passengers who definitely look and make you feel like this will be your last Uber ride. Like uh, the moment they sit in the back seat, you're like, well, I, I love my wife and kids. And, uh, you know, I, I hope my, uh, my will and all that's up to date because you feel like your life's going to come to an end because the person is so menacing. They just have a very negative vibe. And these are the types of people that I straight up tell them, like when they get in the backseat, I'll grab a pipe and say, hey, dude, you look scary. And then you have the ones who you literally have to tell them like, hey, bro, you look like you're going on a spree here. What's going on? You look intimidating. Are you OK? Are you still alive? You know, like I'm willing to go as far as you're willing to go. So these are the types of people that they make you so uncomfortable. And, and if somebody ever, if you're ever Uber driving, somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, let them know they make you feel uncomfortable. There's no surprise factor to this. You're going to be like, hey, bro, yeah, you look like you, uh, like, uh, like your wife left you and, uh, and it looks like you uh, are pretty decided about, what, you know, like you've already made up your mind about what's going to happen to me. So you will meet people that definitely have that very scary vibe. And I tell them, I don't, because uh, if you pretend like it's, like they're not scary, you can just smell it in the air. So if somebody is, uh, they look kind of scary, you let them know, like, hey, buddy, you know, I got a pipe right here, and if you even move the wrong way, it's going to go upside your head. And finally, number 20, the counterpart to number 19, the reverse. The passenger's scared. 
Now, I'm a 280-pound guy, so I get this a lot from females. These are females who are usually single, sometimes it's late at night, and you can tell that they are scared or intimidated by the fact that they're in a car alone with a stranger. And, you know, I am a big guy, so I kind of, I'd be like, hey, you know, I'm not going to bite you, you know, I got a wife, won't bite you, you know, you're okay, you know. Uh, but these people, uh, you can kind of sometimes break the ice with them, like, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just here to make some money. I got a $1,300 car payment here. You know, I don't have time to kidnap anybody. So these passengers, definitely, you're going to get an awkward silence. Um, they're going to avoid eye contact. They're going to be looking out the window all the time. They're going to ask you to take off their child locks. Yeah, they're just, they're scared. And, you know, if you're a big intimidating guy like me, you're going to have to deal with that. But on the flip side, the passenger that scares you is because they're definitely doing something that is abnormal. As a driver, you're not doing anything abnormal. When a passenger shows up and they're just naturally scared of strangers, well, it's not you, the driver. Like, if I did something and I creeped out a passenger, well, then that's completely on me. But if it's the passenger who is just shy and timid, then it's not really my fault as a driver. Well, like, I've picked up girls who sit in the front seat, put the radio on without me asking them, and start singing the songs they like, and they're completely oblivious to any type of danger. And they're young females that, you know, could in fact be vulnerable if you were a creep, right? But whatever, it's not really relevant. But then you've got like, the ones that get to me are the ones where it's like an 85-year-old lady, you know, like lady, you know, she's like in her 50s, she's half bald or whatever. You're like, lady, no, it's, uh, there's a lot, I mean, I'm not a creep, but if I was, you're definitely not on the radar and uh, Somebody would have to be, like, out of prison for you to be on the radar. Like, somebody would have to be, like, out of a 20-year bid, hasn't seen a woman in 30 or 4 years. And even then, I don't think you'd match the profile. I mean, there's just not attractive people, and then they act like you're going to hurt them or whatever. I don't know. I even had one lady who was clearly, I mean, clearly not attractive. This lady looked like, uh, just wasn't attractive, Okay. And she was on the phone the whole time with her husband, acting like if I was actively, like, in a hostage situation. I'm sitting there like, lady, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, just get out. Like, you just get out. Like, I'm not going to, like, I'm not playing this game. Like, there's no way. And again, like, different people, different comfort level. Like I said, I've had females who just, they hop in the car, they sit in the front seat, play music, talk to you about all types of crap, and they're not worried, you know? Um, maybe they're loaded or something. <laughs> well, if you act stupid, I'll blow his head off. I'm not sure. But there's different comfort levels, and there's definitely people who you can visibly tell they're scared. And boy, does that ruin the vibe of a ride. It really does. If, a, if your Uber driver has like three or 400 rides, and they're all good rated rides, maybe one bad ride here or there, and they're like, you're okay. You're going to be okay. But I guess this last one really is the biggest bummer of being an Uber driver. It's somebody who just assumes that you're a creep, and treats you like you're a creep when you have done absolutely nothing creepy to them. And the freaking ride. If you're gonna, if you're that heavy lady, if you're not comfortable, get the crap out. I mean, seriously, just get out. If you're not comfortable. Maybe the next uh, uh, passenger will make you feel more comfortable. I don't know what to tell you, but it's a lot of people who make you feel uncomfortable. You know, another one that'll make you feel uncomfortable is the race card. It's like you got some people that because their race, like 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 a lot of black people, not so much males, but definitely young females. They don't talk to you or they won't interact. And you can totally tell it's a racial boundary. And it's like, why why do that? Like, why treat me different? Because I'm not the same. I'm racist as you. Or, it's weird. But you do meet a lot of people that just, they put up these weird boundaries because, you know, the, you know gender or race. And it's so unnecessary. And it makes the whole ride awkward. There you go. 20 types of passengers you'll meet while Uber driving. Every one of them is different. The best ones are the uneventful ones. The worst ones are the ones that do make a show for themselves.